It's not absolutely essential, but if your goal is to make portraits that are dark and moody, then it really does help to start with a, a background that is sort of dark and moody. And I think this one is gonna tick the box rather well, but it doesn't have to be anything quite as good as this. I've literally done this sort of work before with, well, the rug on the floor, obviously hanging it on the wall. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And this video is all about making your portraits just feel a little bit moodier by using some carefully positioned light and some interesting and easily available props. By the way, if you want to find out more about the gear I'm using, including this rather nice Westcott background, you'll find links to that in the video description below. But whilst you're down there, Click on the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Right, let's get a model in, let's get a light set. Let's find some props. Pulled out this, which I think is gonna be, oh, <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit big. And let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Sophie. Sophie's gonna be the model for this photo shoot. And as you can see, I've set my key light up. It is a Evolve 300 in a 70 centimeter, what we're going to call a beauty dish. It's not a beauty dish. And it's got a grid on it just so I can control the lighting a bit in here. It doesn't bounce off the walls and ceiling, which is gonna help with the shadows. And that's where we're going to start because for this whole look to work, we need really good shadows. And the way to test that is actually turn my flash off. Then my camera settings, I'm at 250th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for my particular camera. I'm at f5.6 as an aperture, just middle of the road. ISO 200, which is the native ISO for my particular camera. I'm gonna take a picture at those settings without the flash firing, no flash, no picture. And that's absolutely essential because these are the darkest shadows I can possibly record. And these photos are all about the shadows. So let's have a look and see what this flash actually does. It's already set up. It's 1 16th power to get the exposure I need. Okay, Sophie, here we go. So this is a single flash, just lighting Sophie. The softbox and the grid combination work really well to control the light but those shadows behind Sophie, well, maybe those are just a little bit too dark. There are lots of ways I could fix this particular problem, but the way I'm gonna do it today is just put a second light in behind Sophie like that. It's on its own separate group, so I can control the power of this light without adjusting the key light. And it doesn't have any light modifiers on it, unusually. I want the light to spread in a nice, well, 180 degrees, 360 degree arc to light the background and a bit of Sophie's back as well. Power-wise, it's a bare flash. I think I'm gonna try something fairly low. Let's try one 128th power. So pretty much at the bottom end of its power range. Okay, Sophie, here we go. Let's see what this does. So that looks really nice. We've got light on Sophie, we've got some light on the background, but does it feel dark and moody? Well, not quite. So to add an extra layer of darkness and mood to this, we've covered Sophie in a cloth. Yes, it's nothing more complicated than just a random piece of cloth, except it's not quite random. It's black, but with a little bit of a textured pattern in it. Sophie's done her best to cover herself and make it look a bit like a cloak, but it'll really come together when we take some photos. So I'm not gonna change anything. We're gonna leave exactly the same lighting. Let's have a look at this. Here we go. And that already feels darker and moodier. I kinda like that, but I think there's one more thing I'm going to change, and that is I'm gonna change from a color image to a black and white image. Now, the best place to do this is in post-processing, but I've got a little preset on my camera that will give me a good idea for how this is going to look. I like the fact there's just a little bit of detail in the black fabric, so it's not just a solid lump of darkness. I think the thing we can do now is take some more photos like this. So, Sophie, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here's a quick little tip about black and white images in camera. If you're gonna do that with JPEGs, remember that black and white effect is baked in. But with raw images, you can remove the effect, return to color, and do a much better black and white conversion in post-processing. So 
I've repositioned the light and it's now overhead. Effectively, what we've created is beauty lighting. And you might think, well, beauty lighting doesn't really go with a dark, moody looking portrait, but it can if we play it right. So I've metered this out, it's f5.6, it still has the background light, nothing's really changed in that respect, but the position and direction of the light is gonna make a difference. Let's take a picture as it stands at the moment. Okay, Sophie, here we go. Now you'll notice I've changed Sophie's styling ever so slightly. We've given her this red collar. A little bit of color I think might make these work a little bit better. It's nice to have the black and white, but it's also nice to use something in color. Thing is, it's a perfectly good picture, but it doesn't quite work. Sophie's styling looks amazing, but we're gonna take it a stage further by removing something from this image. And it is Sophie's eyes, weirdly. Now, that sounds kind of strange, but we're gonna do it by creating shadows because we expect to see eyes in a photo. When you take them out, suddenly everything feels different. And one of the easiest ways to do that is give your subject a hat. So here is a giant hat for you, Sophie. There you go. It's got a nice brim to it, and that brim is gonna cast a shadow. And here's why we've got the overhead light, because the shadow that it casts is gonna go straight down as a line. If the light was off to the left or the right, we'd have a left or right shadow. Okay, let's take the same photo. I don't have to change the exposure. Everything is already set. Here we go. Sophie looks straight ahead at me for me. That's perfect. And as you can see, we suddenly have something missing, but we've added something to the photo. And that's all there is to this. I think we should just take a few photos like this. Sophie, are you ready? Here we go. And I've got a really good idea going. It's very easy to fixate on that and then forget some other thing you wanted to try. And that can be just as simple as turning my camera on its side and doing upright vertical images, which look great. Finally, we are back to some fabric, but different fabric to where we started, and we're gonna use it in a different way. So I've got some lace fabric, and Sophie's got some sheer fabric, and basically what's gonna happen is Sophie's gonna put that over her head, and that's pretty much the end of the situation. It's not, we're gonna make it a bit more interesting than that. But Sophie, if you'd like to uh, adorn yourself in the sheer fabric, <laughs> wonderful. Now. When it comes to working with this, you've got to be a little bit careful because the exposure is a little bit more tricky. I'm gonna move my light so it's not quite so overhead. Let's drop that down a little bit lower, something like that. And then I'm gonna take a meter reading and I'm gonna do it incorrectly first of all because I'm gonna pop this where I would always put it near Sophie's chin. Not sure where your chin is, Sophie. I'm gonna guess about there somewhere. Okay, and I'm gonna get my light to F5.6, which is actually at 1 8th power. And then I'll take a test photo like this. Okay, Sophie, here we go. Now the results are definitely dark. Now, if this is the look you're going for, well done, you nailed it, but I would like to see a little bit of Sophie coming through the fabric. What I'm gonna do is actually get my flash meter inside of the fabric, and then I'm gonna put it roughly where it needs to be. And I can see I'm actually at f2.8, which is why Sophie's face was so underexposed. You could do this by trial and error, of course, if you don't have a flash meter, but I'm exposing for the inside of the fabric and using the fabric itself, effectively like a, a filter, a, a neutral density filter. I haven't changed the background light because that, of course, is not being affected by the fabric. It's only the light on Sophie, but this is gonna affect the results for that picture. And now that looks completely different. You'll notice the background has become a little bit brighter and that's because, well, the light that's reaching it is a lot brighter because we've increased the power of the key lights and it will reach the background. So I'm actually gonna turn that background light down as far as it will go. Let's take one more test photo. Here we go. And that looks great. I love that, that's fantastic. Okay, I think we should take a few photos with this fabric and then we'll mix it up and use the other fabric as well. So Sophie, are you all right under there? Yeah, just about. Okay, 
<laughs> Let's take a few photos like this. Here we go. Just about. <laughs> it's not easy being a model. I've set my key light to expose through the fabric. When I switched fabric to this much thinner lace fabric, I had to reset my exposure for that light all over again. Mood in the pictures always comes from shadows and controlling those shadows was key to making this work and I did that in a couple of ways. I had control of the ambient light right from the start and then we used things like the grid to stop the light bouncing around off the ceiling and walls and maintain those deep shadows. Of course the props helped, the hat had a lovely shadow, the fabric was dark, Everything combines together to create the mood in the photos. And if you've enjoyed this video, or you've got any questions about the video, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And if you haven't already done so, of course, you should click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Yep, still doesn't fit. <laughs>